Sucrose caramelose sodium, also known as cross-linked sodium. Carboxymethylcellulose, or modified cellulose gum, is a commonly used excipient in pharmaceutical and nutraceutical products. But have you ever wanted to know what exactly it is, how it is used, and why should you consider it in your formulations? In this video, I will tell you everything that's to know about this excipient. I will describe its chemical and physical properties, regulatory status, how to use it, as well as everything you need to know if you are to successfully use it in your formulations. Hello, buenos dias, howdy. If you're new here, a big welcome. I am Nancy Costello, I am a technical product specialist at PharmaCentral.com. PharmaCentral.com is a premium raw material selection platform and information hub. Our goal is to simplify pharmaceutical raw material selection. We aim to make it simple and convenient, helping you accelerate innovation and new product development. Be sure to check us out at our website and all the usual social channels. Additional links are in the description. So without much ado, let's jump straight into it. First, what is cross caramelose sodium? How is it described in official reference books? cross caramelose sodium is an internally cross-linked carboxymethylcellulose sodium and a super disintegrant. Its consistent performance, compatibility with a wide range of active ingredients, and amenability with direct compression, wet granulation, roller compaction, and capsule filling have put in good stead among formulators and manufacturers. It is commonly known as E468, as well as many other trade names, some of which are shown here on this slide. It's supplied as a white or gray whitish fibrous powder. It is insoluble in water but swells rapidly. Under a microscope, it shows up as irregularly shaped particles. Cross caramelose sodium differs from related cellulose derivatives in not exhibiting galation in water. However, it swells when exposed to moisture, leading to an explosion-like disintegration of tablets. Let me briefly touch on the chemical structure and a few other important points. This will help us understand the fundamental differences between cross caramelose sodium and comparable cellulose derivatives. The basic backbone of cross caramelose sodium is sodium carboxyethyl cellulose, a polymer made up of beta D glucose units, whose free hydroxyl groups are partially substituted by carboxymethyl groups. Carboxymethyl cellulose sodium is obtained by reacting cellulose from specific wood sources with sodium hydroxide, followed by treatment with monochloroacetic acid. Crosslinking is then achieved when the sodium carboxymethyl cellulose is treated with heat in the presence of the acid. So, from a chemical point of view, cross caramelose sodium is the sodium salt of a crosslinked partially O carboxymethylated cellulose. It's a mouthful, I know, but it's what it is. The general chemical structure and formula of cross caramelose sodium are shown here. Chemical identifiers are codes used to identify chemical substances based on information like atoms, bond connectivity, stereochemistry, and electronic charge. When it comes to cross caramelose sodium, here are its key chemical identifiers. Cross caramelose sodium is an approved pharmaceutical excipient. It enjoys worldwide approval for use in pharmaceutical products. It is listed in all major pharmacopeers, including the United States Pharmacopeer, European Pharmacopeer, the Japanese Pharmacopeer, and many others. Cross caramelose sodium is included in the United States FDA Inactive Ingredients Database. A specification for it is also included in the Food Chemicals Codex, allowing it to be used in food and nutraceutical products. Let us now consider how cross caramelose sodium is currently used in pharmaceutical formulations. So, the main and frankly only purpose of cross caramelose sodium is as a disintegrant in solid oral pharmaceutical products, both in capsule and tablet formulations. Disintegration is simply the process by which a solid tablet or capsule compact breaks down into smaller components in order to facilitate dissolution and absorption of the active substance. This is why disintegrating agents are important formulation ingredients. Cross caramelose sodium is capable of absorbing water rapidly, thereby swelling significantly, typically four to eight fold, all in under 10 seconds. The action of pulling water into the tablet core reduces the physical bonding forces between the core's particles, which leads to rapid disintegration. The term super as used in super disintegrant was coined in the 1960s. It simply refers to the powerful disintegration force generated at low concentrations by this class of disintegrant, when compared to traditional disintegrants like starch. 
Crow's caramel of sodium has several benefits. One, it is suitable for use in wet granulation, direct compression, and dry granulation. Two, its powerful wicking effect makes it highly effective in formulations containing insoluble fillers, such as calcium phosphate. However, it works less effectively in slightly soluble and soluble fillers. Three, it is suitable for products where the use of starch is contraindicated. Four, it is effective when used intragranularly and or extragranularly. Although for optimum results, 50% of cross caramelose sodium should be added intragranularly during wet granulation. Five, it works by attracting water into the tablet pores, followed by swelling. Modern pharmaceutical products are complex formulations in which several ingredients are combined together. Many of these materials have the potential to adversely affect consumers, particularly if used in large quantities. It is for these reasons that excipient safety is very important. This is formally assessed by monitoring a material's effects on vital systems, in particular, the cardiovascular, the central nervous, and respiratory system. Safety is especially important since excipients are often present in higher proportions relative to the active ingredient. Cross caramelose sodium has been used in pharmaceutical and dietary supplement tablets for several decades. It's been shown to be a safe and well-tolerated substance. Health authorities currently consider it a generally non-toxic and non-irritant excipient. It is closely related to another widely used chemical substance, sodium carboxymethylcellulose, which has been shown to be safe. No treatment-related adverse effects or deaths were observed following a three-month oral toxicity study by the European Food Safety Agency. The current recommended usage level in dietary tablets is not more than 30 mg per kilogram body weight per day. The World Health Organization has not specified an allowed daily intake value when used as a food additive since the levels required to achieve disintegrant properties are lower than what would be required to cause health hazards. Did you know that the source of cellulose used in the production of cross caramelose sodium has an impact on several important properties of the material? For instance, cross caramelose sodium derived from wood pulp tends to have a lower molecular weight, a higher solubility, but decreased water binding and swelling capacities when compared with material derived from cotton flock. And one other thing. The particle size of cross caramelose sodium has an influence on disintegrant properties. The larger the particle size, the greater is the water uptake, and therefore, the swelling properties of cross caramelose sodium. This effect is attributed to the formation of a viscous layer upon contact with water. Materials that have a smaller particle size form a more viscous layer because of enhanced interactions with water, which slows down the disintegration process. The amount of cross caramelose sodium that is added to any given formulation depends on the type of the formulation, the granulation process, and the types of fillers used. Solubility of the major tablet component, either the drug or filler, is possibly the most important factor when it comes to the rate and mechanism of tablet disintegration. I should also add that when selecting a grade of cross caramelose sodium, attention should be paid to its impurity profile. The common impurities include chloroacetic acid, nitriles, and nitrates, which are potentially hazardous. Also, adsorption of some weekly basic drugs and their salts to cross caramelose sodium has been reported, and this may lead to incomplete drug release characteristics. Cross caramelose sodium works best with insoluble excipients such as decalcium phosphate and calcium carbonate rather than soluble fillers, such as lactose monohydrate and mannitol. On the other hand, the use of alkaline fillers such as sodium carbonate, sodium bicarbonate, and calcium carbonate is accompanied by a slowdown in dissolution upon storage, the slowdown being proportional to the increase in alkalinity. We do not have the time or space to go through every detail, but if you're interested, visit our website where you will find several resources on this topic. I also have produced this table which provides information on recommended usage levels for many different formulations. So there we have it. A very quick take about cross caramelose sodium, its properties and uses. Hopefully, you found this information useful. Also, check out our other videos on other excipients, technologies, and formulation tips. If we'd have been of value to you, please consider smashing that like button below. Also, let us know your thoughts in the comments section. And so that you don't miss out when we release new content, please subscribe to our fledgling channel. We commit to posting content regularly over the coming months. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and we hope to see you soon.